Let's bring in Trump team attorney Will Scharf. Will, thanks for being here. Opening statements set to begin this week. Before we get into particulars, set the scene. What's the strategy? What, what is the uh, Trump defense going to look like? Yeah, look, while the prosecution and the media are hell-bent on sensationalizing this case, we're focusing on the facts, because the facts show that President Trump did absolutely nothing wrong. This is a business records case. Those business records accurately reflected payments to one of President Trump's lawyers as legal retainer fees. Additionally, those records weren't actually entered by President Trump. He was busy running the country from the White House while all this was happening in Trump Tower in New York. We believe the facts are absolutely on our side, that they're absolutely exonerative of the president. And as long as the jury focuses on the facts, as long as the jury can see through all the media coverage and all the sensationalism and focus on the actual facts at issue in this case, uh, we believe we have a winning case. And that's what you're going to see play out in court tomorrow with opening arguments. Hey, Will, I had a former Manhattan district attorney or prosecutor on the show a little bit earlier. He talked about the fact that there's two lawyers on the jury. That's a very... Um, unconventional move by both a prosecutor and, and the defense team. It, his suspicion was that the argument and the theme, therefore, from the defense in, in looking at those two lawyers on the jury is making the technical argument that no matter the facts, this doesn't add up to a crime. As they go back to that, go back to that jury room to, to argue, is that, the, is that a rational theme that explains the presence of two lawyers on the jury? Look, I think a lot of aspects of jury selection in this case have been highly abnormal. Uh, you saw a huge number of jurors being excused for cause because they admitted that they couldn't be fair and impartial and unbiased as we expect of jurors. It's a little unusual to have lawyers seated on a jury like this. Uh, but I think in many respects, uh, that's one of the least unusual aspects of this case. This case should have obviously never have been brought. Uh, it certainly shouldn't be tried in New York, the, the media capital of the world, at the height of election season. Uh, we've moved to recuse the judge. We've moved for a change of venue. Uh, there are a lot of aspects of this case that are highly, highly irregular. And we saw that play out with jury selection last week. Well, you know, I want to read something for you. This is from The New York Times. And they said New York state prosecutors have never before filed an election law case involving a federal campaign. Jim Trusty also talked about the way they elevated a misdemeanor to a felony. He said pretty much historically unique and something you'll never see again. It, it just strikes me as unbelievable that there is no precedent for this. And I have to believe at least one juror, even in a blue state, like a blue jurisdiction like Manhattan, will have the wherewithal to see something is happening here. This is unprecedented. Yeah, you know, James Madison in the Federalist Papers wrote about the use of political faction or by political faction of newfangled and artificial treasons to oppress their political opponents. I think that's what we're seeing play out in courtrooms across America. Uh, we're seeing prosecutors who are hell bent on interfering with the 2024 election bringing these unprecedented legal theories against President Trump, uh, all because of what he's doing, because he's running for president. It's an outrageous abuse of the legal system. I think Alvin Bragg's prosecution in New York that we're seeing play out in court this week mm -hmm. is example A of that phenomena. And it's outrageous. It should offend all Americans of all political stripes. Uh, Will, you're not the only one saying that. Uh, here is CNN's top legal analyst saying pretty much the same thing. Watch. On the scale of cases that prosecutors charge, it's middling, it seems to me. I mean, again, keep in mind there's stuff we don't know, but it's middle of the pack. Um, and, and I'm not saying that to hedge. I've seen enough to know, you know, one to 10, it's a five, a four and a half. I mean, let me put it to you this way. If they were trying this case in, in a jurisdiction that, that had gone 50-50, Trump-Biden, hmm. I would say there's no chance of a conviction. Chance of a conviction <laughs> if it was actually fair. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't rate this case a five. I'd rate this case a zero. Uh, the fact that this case is seeing the inside of a courtroom at all is an absolute outrage and speaks to the politicization of our system of law enforcement Absolutely. in the courts under the Biden administration and their political allies across the country. I mean, again, we have the leading candidate for president being forced to take time off the campaign trail for a totally invented legal theory that has, as you said, has never seen the light of day in a courtroom before. It's right. absolutely outrageous. And I think any fair and impartial jury will see through uh, all the sensationalism and all the media coverage uh, and would feel honor bound to vote to acquit here. And we're, we're hoping that's what will play out in New York.
Yeah, it's a, it's a hypothetical that presumes this would be brought in any other jurisdiction, and the case wouldn't even yeah. have been brought in, an, in another jurisdiction, any other jurisdiction. One more question for you, Will. Um, I know you're not going to lay out a playbook for us here on Sunday before the trial starts, but it will not only be opening statements here in the next couple of days, in the first week, we anticipate probably the first prosecution witness. And again, another probably, that could be Michael Cohen. Um, what what would be, in, the, in, in what you could share, the cross-examination um, theme or strategy with Michael Cohen? Well, look, that's a little bit of a complicated question to answer because of the wildly unconstitutional unilateral gag order entered against President Trump and our team in this case. I would say with respect to Michael Cohen, as we've said in court pleadings, uh, this is a man who's been found liable for perjury by a number of courts previously. Uh, and I think that's, uh, that's going to be a key theme here, is the fact that the prosecution's witnesses uh, simply are not credible people, whereas the actual facts here uh, fully support President Trump because he did nothing wrong. All right. Thank you very much, Will Scharf. Will, thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.